And while new school buildings are popping up across the state, many local districts are still in dire need of some new ones. For years, there was a moratorium on most school construction projects, but since 2018, it's really been full steam ahead. New this morning, Kate Walsh is joining us with how voters are going to decide the future of the state of our schools this November. This, this high school has been around for 100 years. And its age is evident. It's not necessarily accessible. So you can see there's, there's a, a stair here, so if you... There's no ramp, so a student would be challenging. Inside is arguably worse, the auditorium literally falling apart. Stuffy, undersized classrooms equipped for the past. So how do you transform this century-old Central Falls High School to, say, this state-of-the-art East Providence High School? Money. And it's available, according to Rhode Island Department of Education Chief Operating Officer Mario Carreño. Not only are we building communities and helping education, but we're also putting people to work. So it's, a, it's a really, it's a triple win. Carreño said state lawmakers allocated $50 million from a state surplus in last year's budget to be used for future school construction projects. Last year, they had something similar, which allowed the state's five most underserved communities to apply for money up front through what was called the Facility Equity Initiative. The Facility Equity Initiative made it possible so that every classroom here at Calcutt Middle School in Central Falls could get brand new furniture. And the best part of it is all of the furniture, the chairs, the tables, are kid and teacher approved. We walked the halls and saw how the money also transformed entire labs and classrooms. Additionally, all Rhode Island voters will determine this November if the state should allocate another $250 million in tax money for school construction. The statewide bond benefits everyone, so it's not like it just goes to one community or another. If you look at the breakdown of the previous bond, over 45 communities, including charter schools, receive funding. So we anticipate the same will happen with this next with this next bond. On top of that, specific communities will ask voters if they want the community to spend a portion of a shared $1.3 million in bonds. The less affluent a community, the bigger the share that the state pays. Back to Central Falls, a new high school is already being designed for a parcel down the street from the current one. Just one example of a similar story we're seeing in cities and towns across the ocean state. In Central Falls, I'm Kate Walsh, 12 News.